guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about the importance of taking your basal body temperature and how it's the most accurate way to find out if you're ovulating, when you're ovulating. It's the best way to find out uh, when to ovulate if you're trying to get pregnant. Um, I highly recommend it. So first things first, you want to buy a basal body thermometer. Not a regular thermometer because it won't work. Make sure that it says basal body thermometer. So when you ovulate, it shoots up progesterone causing your temperatures to rise. So when you first start off your cycle, day one of your period, your temperatures are fluctuating, but on a lower level. Once you get your progesterone, once you ovulate, your progesterone is gonna go up and then your temperatures are up here. If your temperatures drop, that means that you're about to get your period. If they stay elevated, it's most likely that you are pregnant. So now you're taking your temperature every day and you're gonna be jotting them down and you're gonna see the pattern of your entire uh, chart. You can't go off every single, you can't go one day, two days at a time and be like, okay, what does this mean? It's not gonna mean anything until you look at the full picture after that month is completed, you can see like, oh, this is exactly when I'm ovulating. Here's my luteal phase. And you can see the overall picture. Um, you can see, you're gonna be jotting all this down in your chart. I use um, Fertility Friend app to chart, to use uh, for all my charting, for, um, you know, my cervical mucus, if it's high, if, it's, if my cervix is high, if it's low, um, you know, when I did the baby dance, I used Fertility Friend to write all of those things down and then it puts it all together in a chart where I can see the overall picture. Again, it's not gonna mean anything when you look at the first few days or whatever, or before ovulation. It's until after your entire cycle is over that you can get a really good look at you know what you're doing and, and what you're, what's going on in your cycle um, and it'll make a lot more sense. So here's how you take it. You're gonna start on day one, which is the very first day that you get your period, and you're gonna take it when your body is at complete rest. So you're gonna take it the very first thing in the morning. As soon as your eyes open, you're gonna roll over and you're gonna take your thermometer. Don't sit up, don't walk around. You can't move, like zero movement. Basically, you're just gonna leave it on your nightstand at arm's length, you're gonna grab it, and you're gonna pop it in and you're gonna take your temperature. Make sure that you are taking it with enough sleep. So make sure that you're getting at least four hours of sleep. If you are, you know, working an all-nighter and you're only getting two hours of sleep, it will not give you an accurate reading. So make sure that it's at least four hours of, you know, straight sleep and then you wake up and you take it. Um, if you are partying all night or even, you know, having some drinks at, for dinner um, and you were tipsy the next day, it's not gonna give you an accurate read because drinking makes your uh, temperature rise. So um, you wanna, uh, not e don't even take it that day, wait till the next day that you're not drinking. If you're having just one glass of wine, it's fine, but anything, um, you know, excessively or, or a few glasses, then I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even bother jotting it down. Now I'm not saying don't drink ever again, I'm just saying, you know, just be careful with that. Um, so I'm gonna show you the basal body thermometer that, that I bought. Um, I'm gonna leave the link down below so you guys can check that out. And maybe it's a little bright, but basal body thermometer, just always make sure that it says that. So what you're gonna do is just gonna little, little movement, roll over, grab it, turn it on. And it's, it's fairly easy. It's very easy. The most annoying part is that you have to, it takes dedication. You have to do this every single day for an entire month, uh, for months, and you're waking up at the same time. So if it's your day off, you're waking up at seven o'clock in the morning. And it has a light, which I like, because if you're in the dark, um, you know, and you can't, you can't really see what you're doing. So you're just gonna pop it in, make sure that it's in the back, of your um, under your tongue but all the way in the back don't not this it has to go all the way in the back you want to get make sure that it's in there and you're getting a good reading okay. 
it's then going to beep and then make sure that you quickly write that down in your app and then roll over and go back to sleep if it's your day off or if you have to get up you know um obviously if you have work time it around the time that you have to wake up for work but just make sure that you are consistent with the time um so you will hear the beep and then you just write it down and you continue do, doing that all month long so that you can see exactly when you are ovulating now i can i highly recommend for you to continue doing it especially if you have issues um, like pcos like me um, it'll tell you exactly when you're ovulating um, and because I, I never knew like it, for me ovulation was it's a guessing game um, you know I have no idea when I ovulate it could be you know day 18 on a good on a good cycle or it could be day 35 I've ovulated on day 50 like I just never know so it's, it's a huge guessing game um, so for me this is like if especially if you're trying to get pregnant this will tell you exactly when you're ovulating or even if you're ovulating at all uh, because then you'll you'll see the, the rise in the temperature and you know that you've ovulated also you want to make sure that you are also tracking and looking at your cervical mucus so if you if you're looking at your cervical mucus every single day and you're also doing your um, basal body thermometers in the morning it is a great way for you to know when you're ovulating when you're about to ovulate so what you do is, you know, you look at your cervical mucus every day. It's, you know, it'll be, it'll change. So it'll be creamy, creamy, creamy. And the next thing you know, it'll start getting like, it'll be watery. Then the next day it'll be um, egg white. And you know, once you see like maybe watery or, and then obviously egg white is that you have ovulate or you're just about to ovulate. And then you can also match that with the increase of your uh, temperature. And when you see that you have an increase of temperature, you'll be like, okay, I, I just ovulated, um, you know, and you can time your, you know, your baby dance around all these signs. Um, now, usually the next day after I ovulate, right away, my cervical mucus changes to, to creamy again. So that's how, like with all those signs, I know, oh yes, so I ovulated. And just make sure that your temperature, when it rises, that it is, um, it's a straight consecutive uh, three-day rise of high temperatures if it's just because sometimes our, our temperatures do fluctuate so sometimes it'll be um, you know it'll be like this and then it'll shoot up and then maybe go back like I've seen that and I'm like oh like what the you know so let me just make sure that it's um, a flow of temperatures and then you'll see a lot of women actually get a dip and then it'll rise um, that has happened to me many times um, that's also a great sign but if you don't get that that's completely normal as well um it's just uh it helps you you know detect also so you'll you'll get the, the temperatures and then it'll rise and now if it stays up there for three consecutive days then you know you've ovulated now with charting there are ways to tell if you are possibly pregnant um you, we know how the two-week wait can be it's you know it's it's frustrating it's um you know you get impatient and you want to know you're looking at every little sign and detail so if you're charting it's it's a really big help because you can um see like different things like for me i was able to see when when i got a dip in implantation now this doesn't happen for everyone um if it doesn't happen to you that does not mean that you're not pregnant um, but for some women um they can see when they've implanted so you will get you know your rise in your progesterone temperatures are up here and then you'll just see like a one day it's a one day dip and then your your temperatures are high again um don't get scared you know if you see the dip don't be you know don't think that it's your period but if it continues to drop then yes then it's your period but if it goes right back up it's a one day thing it's could be implantation so another thing that happened to me was that i got a second temperature rise so my levels were here after ovulation and then they went up and it my progesterone rose to a second uh, level and it remained up there because I was pregnant um, also another thing that you can detect is if you have a short luteal phase and then maybe hopefully you can correct that problem I did um, I did a video on short luteal phase and how to um, help your body and you know get your luteal phase or extend your luteal phase um, 
So if your luteal phase is less than 10 days, if you look at your chart, you can see, oh, okay, I ovulated di this day, and you can count and see when you get your next period, or um, you know, if you, if you get your next period, then you can count the days in between. If it's less than 10 days, you do have a short luteal phase and you need to fix the problem because that is basically why you are not getting pregnant. Um, but like I said, you need to look at the overall uh, pattern of your of your chart, your overall chart, and see, it could help you pinpoint, it could help you and your doctor pinpoint what's going on in your cycle, uh, what maybe you can fix with natural remedies or whatever the case may be. So I highly recommend charting and taking your temperatures in the morning. Some people, you know, try forever and they have no idea that they have a short luteal phase. Um, you know, or some women are not even ovulating and they have no idea until they start charting. So I highly recommend, you know, sticking with it. It is, um, it could be, like I said, really annoying, you know, waking up every day and, you know, charting these things down. But I, overall, I think that um, it can definitely help you if you have an issue or even if you don't have an issue, you know when you've ovulated, uh, you know what day you're ovulating. Some people think that they're ovulating on the 14th, um, but they might be ovulating on the 19th. So that's a wrap for my video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Give me a thumbs up. Also, if you are charting, please comment below. Let me know how it's going for you. Um, if you want me to explain anything or have any questions, you know, just write me in the comments and I'll be more than happy to explain it for you. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.